Welcome to the Nottingham Clinical Research Bulletin from the Research and Innovation Team at Nottingham University Hospitals NHS Trust and the NIHR Nottingham Biomedical Research Centre. Each week we'll be bringing you a potted summary of clinical research and related stories from our researchers. You'll find a link in the show notes for information on pretty much every item. So here we go. Notts County legend Les Brad has been helping our researchers investigating football-related injuries. Les is county's all-time leading goal scorer with 137 goals during 11 years as a striker with the club. He's one of more than 40 retired professional footballers helping researchers at the National Institute of Health and Care Research Biomedical Research Centre in Nottingham. The study's looking at whether intensive sports can lead to long-term injuries and Les admits his own action-packed career playing the beautiful game has taken its toll. I I had certainly two serious injuries to my left knee. Um, One damage to my cruciate um, ligament that caused uh, caused me to have operation and I believe I was, after the uh, event, I was told it it was life-threatening. And I have also had cartilage removed from the same knee and I believe you know they are definitely football injuries and they led to me needing total knee replacement which took place um, 10 years ago when I was around um, 65 years of age. And there's more on that story and a link in the show notes. We hit national and international headlines this week for a study which identified 500 genes linked to lung health. The Universities of Leicester and Nottingham led the global study that enables the creation of a personalised risk score for lung health. Genomes from over half a million participants worldwide were analysed, making it the largest and most ethnically diverse study of its kind. The fundings paved the way for potential new treatments to tackle conditions such as COPD and asthma and highlight existing drugs that could be potentially repurposed at speed. Published in the journal Nature Genetics, it was funded by Wellcome and supported by the NIHR Biomedical Research Centres in Leicester and Nottingham. And there's more information and a link in the show notes, as ever. (music) Meanwhile, a review of COVID treatments for vulnerable people in Nottingham showed that being white, female and better off meant you were more likely to accept COVID-19 treatment. The researchers called for referral systems to be reviewed and improved to make sure every community is served equally. They also concluded that some of the systems to identify vulnerable COVID-19 patients during lockdown were inefficient. The study was published in peer-reviewed journal PLOS1, that's P-L-O-S-1, there's a link in the show notes, and clinical lecturer Dr Amanda Goodwin describes the study. We looked at all patients who were screened by our COVID medicines delivery unit over a nine week period and looked at their outcomes and characteristics. What we found is that um, the overall rates of hospitalisation and death from COVID-19 were lower than those reported in the previous studies. However, we also found that patients who didn't accept treatment were more likely to come from a deprived area than those that did. And we're not sure of the exact reasons for that. We know that future research now needs to look at those aspects and address those barriers to ensure that there's equitable access to COVID-19 treatment. Our study wasn't able to tell us the exact reasons that um, patients from more deprived areas seemed less likely to accept treatment for COVID-19. However, it does fit with other reports that patients from more deprived areas tend to access healthcare differently to those from more affluent areas. There are lots of potential reasons, which could include differences in understanding of what drugs are available, differences in how people convey or perceive their symptoms, and also practical aspects like transport, childcare, and getting time off work. However, it's really important now for us to look at those potential barriers and address them so that we can make sure that everyone has access to the treatment that they need. If you fancy spending an evening discussing the possible uses of blood, urine, saliva and body tissue together with their related health data, then we have an online event you'll love. It's organised by Nottingham Bioresource Service and hosted by the BRC Director, Professor Ian Hall. The evening's an opportunity for researchers, patients and the public to discuss the service, which holds approximately 160,000 samples donated by patients at Nottingham University Hospital's NHS Trust. The bank of samples is being used for research into diseases such as cancer, heart disease and COVID-19. 
The evenings on Wednesday the 29th of March from 5.30pm and is one of a series of events organised by our Research Lounge Project, a regular programme of free online events started by patients in 2019. The idea is to provide a relaxed informal space for researchers, patients and members of the public to discuss clinical research topics, the latest research findings and new research areas. It's free, but you have to register first. There's a link in the show notes or you can find it on Eventbrite. And finally, there's still time just to apply for a job as a theme manager at the NIHR Nottingham BRC. It's project managing and supporting the BRC gastrointestinal and liver research theme. And it's full time and it's a band seven. Closing date is March the 23rd and there's a link in the show notes and on the NUH website. And that's it for now. Thanks for listening. There are links for most of the items in the show notes and more information about research and innovation in general at Nottingham on the Nottingham University Hospital NHS Trust website, which is www.nuh.nhs.uk forward slash research and on the NIHR Nottingham Biomedical Research Centre website, which is nottinghambrc.ac.uk. Our email and social media links are there too. If you want to stay up to date with the Clinical Research Podcast, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google and wherever you normally get your podcasts. The more shows are rated and reviewed, the easier it is for search engines to find us. So if you can subscribe and rate and review us, you'll be doing it for science. 